Okay, so let us begin a new topic uh, which is uh, Van der Waals fluid. So, Van der Waals fluid is a example a sim the simplest example of a, a non ideal uh, gas basically what you know ideal gases classical ideal gases specifically they remain gases regardless of uh, what pressure you apply or how much you lower the temperature it is never going to change phase. So, however, uh, in real life all gases are going to either liquefy or solidify depending upon how, how much temperature uh, you lower or how much pressure you apply and so on. So, if you want to uh, you know if you want the subject of statistical mechanics to have any relevance to real life uh, you had better be studying gases that can in principle liquefy uh, even in theory. So, in, because we know in practice in reality they do liquefy and, uh, uh, and even solidify. So, the question is how would you go about studying uh, a non ideal gas. So, in general what we talk about in this uh, chapter or in this section is uh, a fluid. So, a fluid is anything that flows. So, uh, by uh, definition it excludes solids. So, I am going to only focus on uh, two phases that is one is the gaseous phase and the other is the liquid phase. So, the idea is to come up with a model a simple model uh, that describes a fluid. So, that means a phase which could be a gas, but then if you would do appropriate things to it such as lower temperature or apply more pressure then in principle it could also become a liquid. So, I want to be uh, studying such a system uh, mathematically and using the methods of statistical mechanics and thermodynamics that I have learned till now. So, the question is how would I do that. So, the uh, first person to uh, do it in a satisfactory way was the uh, Dutch physicist uh, Johannes van der Waals. So, you can see from this, uh, this picture that I have uh, displayed that uh, he lived uh, uh, between 1837 and 1823 and um, so his uh, main contribution was to what is called the van der Waals equation of state for a van der Waals fluid. So, van der Waals fluid is the simplest uh, uh, you know caricature of a real fluid uh, that you see in real life. Okay. So, so let us uh, let us go ahead and discuss uh, what van der Waals fluid is. Okay, uh, so, van der Waals equation of state. So, the basically before I get to the equation of state let me tell you what the fluid it actually is. So, the van der Waals imagined that uh, he imagined a usual uh, gas that means which has all these molecules uh, and unlike an ideal gas uh, which only interacts with the walls of the container. So, uh, he said that uh, you know we should also be considering the idea that when the molecules approach each other then uh, when they are sufficiently close they can attract each other. So, the idea is that they, uh, they have a certain short range attractive interaction uh, which uh, contributes basically to the lowering of the energy because it is attractive. So, there is a kind of lowering of energy and uh, the uh, amount by which it gets lowered that is the is proportional to the density of particles. So, that the, the lowering per particle is proportional to the density of particles. So, that is what uh, we postulate. And the other thing which uh, is concomitant with the, this idea is that see each uh, molecule uh, he assumed uh, had a certain finite volume. So, uh, so as a result uh, the uh, volume actually that is available to the fluid is uh, the total volume in the box minus the uh, volume occupied by the molecules. So, uh, these are the two postulates that van der Waal made about his uh, real fluid. So, you can see that uh, that is kind of captured in this uh, free energy. So, it is easier to start in terms of the free energy. So, the idea is that you replace the volume so, if, if I did not have this B and this A, if, if I put A and B to 0. So, what I am going to be describing is the perfectly ideal classical gas. So, now the idea is to systematically modify the free energy of an ideal gas to, uh, to be able to start describing a non ideal fluid. 
So, the question is how would you do that? So, the way you do that is to you know adopt or uh, incorporate both the postulates of van der Waals. So, the first postulate is that the volume available uh, to the fluid is not the volume of the box which is capital V, but rather it is uh, the volume uh, of the box minus the volume occupied by the molecules. So, the uh, uh, N B, so if B, if B is the uh, volume occupied by each molecule, then N B is the volume occupied, uh, volume occupied by the molecules, all the N molecules. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, as a result V minus N B is the volume available to the fluid. So, that is why uh, here in so uh, in the free energy expression wherever there is V, I am going to substitute V minus N B. So, implying that uh, uh, the volume available to the fluid is now less. So, so I am going to systematically modify the free energy of an ideal classical gas to obtain the free energy of a non-ideal gas. So, how would I? Do? So, this is how I do it. So, the, the, I incorporate the first postulate, uh, which is uh, you know replace V by V minus N B. The other thing I should not forget to do is uh, incorporate the idea that there is an attractive interaction between the molecules which basically lowers the energy. So, it is uh, the attractive interaction per uh, per particle is uh, actually proportional to the density uh, times A. So, this is the attractive interaction, the, uh, the amount by which the energy is gets lowered. So, A is some constant which is measures the strength of the attractive interaction and uh, it is clearly proportional to the density. So, uh, more molecules there are per unit volume, the more attraction there is clearly because they are going to all come closer more easily and then there is more attraction. So, it is proportional to the density. So, the free energy is extensive. So, it is proportional to n, but then there is also a intensive quantity which is which is basically tells you the attractive uh, energy of the attractive interaction which is proportional to the density times a constant which signifies the strength of the interaction and rho itself is n by v. Okay, so, uh, if you swallow this, if you uh, accept that this is uh, a valid modification of the ideal gas uh, free energy, then you can go ahead and uh, ask yourself what are the consequences of this modification. It so happens that uh, you can work out the equation of state. So, once you know the free energy, you can do your th usual thermodynamics and work out the equation of state and uh, you end up with this. So, this is the usual starting point that people uh, use to describe van der Waals fluid. So, it has its usual feature namely that I have replaced the volume. So, this is just P V so, this has a very familiar ring to it that is it is P V equals N T which is the uh, usual uh, classical ideal gas equation. So, all I have done is modified this in this fashion. So, I have replaced the volume of the fluid by the volume available to the fluid and that is volume minus the volume occupied by the molecule. So, the volume of the box which is V minus the volume available to the fluid which is uh, volume of the box minus the volume occupied by the mo molecules which is N B. So, the other thing I have to make sure is that uh, there is the at, uh, idea that it is uh, that uh, interactions are attractive. So, that uh, basically what it does is it lowers the pressure on the walls. So, uh, so if you calculate the pressure it comes out to be uh, so, if from here if you calculate the pressure on the walls of the container, it is less than what it is for the ideal gas. So, in fact, it is going to be uh, P equals N T by V V dash, V dash is V minus N B. So, minus N into N A by V uh, V squared, well ok N squared by V squared ok. So, you see it is less than it is less than what you normally expect it to be normally expect it to be this 
this is the pressure acting on the wall so in the absence of interaction if the if the if the molecules did not attract each other if they don't at if they just had some size which is small b but they didn't attract each other you know the the pressure they would exert on the wall would st simply be nt by the volume um, available to the fluid which is v dash which is n v minus nb however in addition to uh, having a finite size uh, if the molecules also attract each other then uh, because they attract each other they won't exert uh, as much pressure on the walls as they would if they didn't attract each other and as a result the pressure gets lowered so in fact you don't have to i mean you can either start with this or you could start with this and derive this it's the same thing okay so i'm uh, i'll allow you to use whatever interpretation you wish you so you can either start with this or and try to derive this so that in other words you can start with the um, equation of state and derive the free energy or you can start with the free energy and try to derive the equation of state so now let's now focus on the equation of state this is called van der waals equation of state so now i'm going to point out to you that this has a very curious feature which is not shared by uh, which is not uh, present in actually uh, in a classical ideal gas and that is the existence of what's called a critical point so critical point is a particular value for the um, volume of the gas and a particular value for the temperature and therefore also for the pressure such that the pressure uh, near the a critical point is uh, a constant so in other words when you are near the critical point the pressure doesn't change uh, so if if you plot isotherms that means you fix the temperature and you plot pressure versus volume so you will see that there's a region uh, there's a certain temperature uh, at which um, the pressure becomes independent of the volume and so if the pressure is independent of the volume it's uh, effectively saying that the uh, first derivative and the second derivatives are zero so in other words it's nearly independent of the volume so uh, so pressure is sort of flat so i mean in other words it's it's nearly constant so you can use uh, uh, this uh, you can um, use your uh, equation of state this is van der waals equation of state and uh, you can go ahead and uh, use this to calculate uh, what this means what are the critical points so i'm i'm going to uh, leave a lot of this to uh, homeworks and exercises later on so now i'm not going to uh, derive everything so so that you'll be you'll also have an opportunity to follow along uh, in fact you should be doing this uh, as i said already you should not think of this as a story and you should follow along by a uh, proactively working out the uh, claims that i'm making and making sure that they are valid okay um now if i insert uh, or if i incorporate these two ideas into this van der waals equation of state i can show that uh, basically this implies that there is a critical volume and there's a critical temperature and therefore there is a critical pressure if you combine with the van der waals equation of state you will see that there's a critical pressure as well so now it's very convenient uh, because now you see um, these critical volumes critical temperature they all depend upon b's and a's so if b's and a's were not there so the b's and a's are what make the gas non ideal so if the b's and a's were not there so there won't be any critical point so b's and a's tell you that basically the gas is non ideal so now uh, assuming it's there i can uh, uh, start measuring my volume in units of the critical volume the critical volume times some dimensionless number which is called v of r so basically v of r is nothing but uh, the volume of the box times the critical volume which is uh, which is dimensionless so in other words it's like measuring uh, the volume of the box in units of the critical volume so same with temperature i'm going to measure the temperature uh, in units of 
in units of the critical temperature and same with pressure I am going to measure pressure in units of critical pressure. So, if I decide to do this you will see that uh, I can uh, rewrite van der Waals equation of state in this very nice way. So, now notice that this equation this is called the reduced equation of state it does not have any a's or b's. So, in fact, they are all hidden in those uh, p r's and v's. So, they are not explicitly there. So, so I am just measuring the uh, reduced pressure. So, the pressure in units of the critical pressure. So, that means uh, you see the a's and b's basically tell you different values of a correspond to different uh, strengths of the attraction that is present in the gas. So, they correspond to different types of gases for example. So, different gases will have different values of A which is the intermolecular attraction strength, but then uh, the um, uh, reduced equation of state is universal that is in, it is independent of A and it is independent of B which is the size of each molecule. So, so if B is different, so it means that the molecules are either bigger or smaller. So, uh, you can see that the reduced equation of state which is this is also independent of the size of the molecules. So, this equation of state uh, pretty much describes a generic uh, van der Waals fluid uh, which is uh, insensitive to the uh, details of what that fluid really is besides the fact that it is a van der Waals fluid. So, it, it does not matter how big the molecules are, it does not matter how strong the attractive interaction between molecule is uh, regardless of that it is uh, all those different types of gases are still described by the same equation of state. So, and this is called the reduced equation of state. So, and this is uh, this idea that uh, a whole bunch of different gases can be uh, described by what is essentially the same equation of state. It goes by the name of uh, correspondence uh, principle. So, it is uh, something it is called a correspondence principle. All right. So, now uh, I am going to go ahead and because now I have rendered everything dimensionless, I can go ahead and plot uh, the isotherms. So, isotherms are plots of pressure versus volume keeping temperature fixed. So, you can see in this plot that uh, if uh, so, if uh, I make the uh, so sorry this is uh, this is 1. So, the critic I mean in in dimensionless units this is 1. So, this is 1. So, if uh, the reduced temperature is greater than 1. So, that means the temperature is greater than the critical temperature. So, that means that basically so the green plots represent pressure versus volume for fixed temperature greater than 1. So, as you go here the temperature is uh, more and more than the critical temperature. So, as you lower the temperature you will see that you will reach a stage where in this region the pressure becomes constant. So, this is basically the this is uh, this is T r equals 1. So, this is the critical temperature. So, at the critical temperature the the pressure is independent of the volume. So, this plot is flat right there. So, now if you lower the temperature even further, so that means T r is less than 1. So, the temperature is less than the critical temperature. So, you will see that uh, the uh, pressure versus volume uh, becomes somewhat unphysical. So, uh, so the reason why it is unphysical is because uh, if you apply pressure you expect the volume to uh, reduce. Uh, but here what happens is that uh, there is a region in which from here to here it actually as you increase the pressure the volume also increases which is unphysical. So, uh, so after a long time it again becomes uh, physical. So, you see this is so completely physical there is nothing unphysical about this because uh, pressure is monotonically decreasing at a fixed temperature if you uh, increase the pressure you expect the volume to decrease. So, so you see that is consistent with these green lines are perfectly valid and uh, intuitively obvious, but then the blue lines are somewhat unphysical here. So, uh, that is telling you that there is uh, something you know that, that there is something lacking in this van der Waals model that, that uh, there are regions in which the model breaks down basically. 
but then all is not lost you can still salvage the important physics by adopting this point of view that uh, so let me go to the next slide i'll tell you how we salvage the um, these plots and still extract physically meaningful ideas so now uh, i'm going to pick one of those uh, plots one of the uh, blue plots where the temperature is below the critical temperature so the reduced temperature is less than 1 and then i'm going to carefully plot the reduced temperature versus the reduced volume and then it looks like this so, uh, so you see in this region i have written liquid so these points signify that the phase that i'm looking at is a liquid phase and why is that because you see even though the pressure is changing dramatically uh, here because the y axis is the pressure the volume is hardly changing so that is a characteristic of a liquid so it's incompressible so uh, you change the pressure a lot but the volume doesn't change much so that's what happens to a liquid so if you take for example you know you, you just take a glass of water and uh, you know you try to apply pressure to it its volume is hardly going to change so that's typically what a liquid is but then if you come here in this other extreme so uh, here you know even a very small change in pressure causes a huge change in volume so the plot is nearly flat so it implies that so if you change pressure from here to this this value so if you change from uh, this value to this value the pressure changes very slightly but the volume changes enormously so that is a characteristic of a highly compressible fluid so a highly compressible fluid is a gas so th therefore this uh, this particular region of uh, the plot uh, is occupied by gas so now what happens in between is what is interesting so you see i have told you that uh, this region where um, the pressure increases with volume is unphysical so it so happens that uh, uh, the uh, in fact there's a whole region that's unphysical which you can uh, cross out in the following way so uh, i'll tell you why you have to adopt this procedure so the procedure is the following you draw a horizontal straight line uh, such that the the shaded area these two shaded areas are equal so they kind of cancel out so so in other words uh, you make sure that this shaded area is the same as this shaded area okay so you draw a straight line such that these two shaded areas are equal and the straight line signifies a certain particular pressure so and that is uh, what i have denoted as plg so plg is basically the pressure of liquid gas coexistence so the so on this so the claim now is that the uh, van der waals equation of state which now if you literally plot it without any modification namely if you simply plot this blindly it's going to look like this so it's going to look like uh, it's going to start from a high value and then come down again go up again come down but then uh, I've told you that uh, parts of this is uh, unphysical. So the parts that are unphysical is uh, what I've written here. From here to here, it's unphysical. So how do I make it physical? How do I rectify this? So the idea is that you simply join this these two points by a straight line in such a way that this area is same as that area. So then uh, the actually the the physical plot now therefore is as usual the van der Waals. Uh, uh, fluid plot from here to here is given by the van der Waals equation of state and also from here to here is still given by van der Waals equation of state but this is something I have done by hand so I have drawn a horizontal line so these three pieces put together is the correct equation of state so that is the claim so what does this physically mean so physically it means that this region there is liquid because it is incompressible from here to here it is liquid because it's incompressible from here to here it's gas because it's highly compressible but then from here to here you see it's uh, it stands to reason that there's a coexistence that means that um, the pressure is fixed so the uh, the pressure becomes fixed so that's the liquid gas coexistence pressure so there is some uh, some particular so at, at a given temperature there's a particular pressure at which liquid and gas can coexist and at that pressure you can have uh, you know a, a volume can be either this or this 
you know if the volume is this that means all the fluid is in the liquid form. So, if the volume is this then that means all the fluid is in a gaseous form, but if the volume is somewhere in between it means that part of the uh, fluid is in uh, so uh, liquid form part of it is in gaseous form. So, you can in fact write so if this is your uh, uh, volume of your uh, fluid. So, you can always write this as F L uh, V L plus F G V G. So, this is your uh, this is your uh, V G. So, this is your V G and uh, this is your V L. So, uh, here is V L. So, this is the fraction of the fluid that is in F L is the fraction of the fluid that is in a liquid form. Uh, So, the fraction of fluid in liquid form and uh, uh, sorry F g is the fraction of fluid as in gaseous form. So, uh, that you can kind of tune from 0 to 1. So, F l plus F g is 1. So, you can uh, tune it to go from fully liquid to fully gas and in between you have the uh, coexistence region. And the coexistence happens at a particular pressure, uh, which is a function of the temperature of the fluid. So, the uh, temperature is less than the critical temperature, there will always be coexistence between liquid and gaseous uh, states. So, that is this, uh, I mean, that is basically the essence of the Van der Waals fluid. So, this, uh, this tells you that you know the ideal gas equation of state is. Uh, oversimplified and it's too simplistic it doesn't capture the real life situation and then the next best thing you can do is uh, you know describe it by something which is not too complicated like van der waals equation of state but then because it is so simple it also unfortunately becomes slightly unphysical which you will have to the uh, the unphysical aspects of the van der waals equation of state namely uh, this region you will have to reinterpret and fix it by hand and this is how you fix it. Okay, uh, so, now you can uh, go ahead and uh, you know do the same thing uh, not only can you plot uh, the isotherms you can also plot the um, Helmholtz free energy which either I have called it as F or sometimes it is called A. So, uh, you see I can plot it versus volume uh, again for a fixed temperature. So, I can plot the free energy versus volume for a fixed temperature and here you can see the same thing that the this is the V L which is the uh, when all the uh, volume is in the liquid form and V G is when all the volume is uh, in the uh, gaseous form. So, in other words the liquid is fully gaseous here uh, and it is uh, fully liquid there and in between uh, it is uh, the liquid and gases are coexisting. So, so you see um, here also, so this, uh, this plot is basically from the Van der Waals uh, formula. So, that ju just blindly from the formula if you plot. So, if you plot the, this formula, so in other words I have told you what it is, uh, this formula. So, if you simply plot this, you fix temperature and you plot it versus volume. So, this is your Helmholtz free energy. So, if I simply plot it, it is going to look like this, it is going to look uh, like this. So, the point is that this region is unphysical. So, this bump here is unphysical. So, uh, so this, this region is unphysical. So, the question is how do you fix this? So, just like we fixed here, fix this by drawing a straight line here also we are going to. So, we are going to find a tangent here we are going to find a tangent there. So, kind of join this by two tangents and that is going to work out. So, basically this you draw you draw a tangent to this such that and then you erase this part. So, you erase this and you say the Helmholtz free energy is really this plot which is given by the formula and this plot which is given by the formula and this I joined by hand. So, this is like a straight line which just comes because I joined it by hand. So, this is how I uh, you know modify the uh, Van der Waals uh, formulas to describe a 
physically correct fluid. So, the mathematical formulas unfortunately uh, break down for certain values of the parameters. So, I will have to fix it by hand. So, this is how I choose to fix it. Now, uh, it is more illuminating you know you might be wondering this is very mysterious why should I be fixing it this way? How do you know that this is the correct way of fixing the this unphysical aspects? So, that can be uh, better explained if you uh, plot the uh, Gibbs free energy versus pressure uh, okay. So, for a fixed volume. So, you already know I have told you what uh, Legendre transformation is basically the Helmholtz free energy is the uh, Legendre transformed uh, version of entropy. So, in other words the entropy is a function of internal energy volume and the number of particles. So, if you trade the internal energy with temperature uh, using Legendre transformation you get a potential which is uh, the Legendre transform of the entropy which is basically in Helmholtz free energy. So, the Helmholtz free energy is now a, temp a function of temperature volume and number of particles. So, you can uh, go ahead and do one more transformation one more Legendre transformation where you uh, also transform the volume you trade the volume with pressure. So, so the idea is of course, now you have a system uh, you, you have a fluid where the uh, walls of the fluid are uh, not rigid. So, they, they are flexible. So, uh, the fluid comes to an equilibrium with the surroundings. So, so, the pressure equalizes between the fluid and its surroundings, but then it can also exchange energy with the surroundings. So, uh, the temperature of the fluid and the surroundings also equalize. So, so as a result uh, the free energy that is available in such a situation is known as Gibbs free energy. And uh, we have been uh, successful in uh, showing that Gibbs free energy is uh, basically given by the enthalpy which is uh, u plus p v minus t s. And uh, we know from the extensivity of the entropy that uh, so this was called I think the fundamental relation of thermodynamics. So, which is basically the extensivity of entropy allowed us to write this. So, if you combine these two equations you will see that uh, the Gibbs free energy is actually very directly related to the chemical potential. So, in fact, the chemical potential is nothing but the Gibbs free energy per particle. So, which is denoted by small g. So, the chemical potential of the system is nothing but Gibbs free energy per particle. So, coming back to this idea that uh, so, this 2 signifies gas this the Roman numeral 2 signifies gas and Roman numeral 1 signifies liquid. So, here also so, this is gas and this is liquid. So, you can see that uh, if I uh, so, if I plot G versus P for a fixed volume uh, what is going to happen is so, this, this plot suppose I plot it using the Gibbs free energy derived from Van der Waals formulas. Suppose I successfully derive Gibbs free energy. So, I, I already know the Helmholtz free energy then it is just one more step to derive the Gibbs free energy. If I derive Gibbs free energy it is and I try to plot it it is going to look quite ugly it is going to uh, so it is going to look like this uh, it is not going to be single valued also it is going to look like that. So, that is how the plot is going to look like. So, the point is that this region is unphysical. So, the idea is that uh, you kind of snip this off. So, there is a kink there. So, there is some sp something special happening there. So, this basically it is tel telling you there is something special happening right there and what is special is basically the coexistence. So, you see that at this point the gas which is this region coexists with the liquid uh, which is this region. So, they touch here. So, when they touch they touch when the pressure is exactly P L G. So, what does touching mean? Touching basically means that the chemical potential of region 2 is same as chemical potential of because chemical potential is nothing but Gibbs free energy per particle. So, so basically you are equalizing the chemical potential. So, that is signifying that you know when liquids uh, then molecules of the liquid evaporate and become gas or the molecules of the gas condense and become liquid. So, there is a 
kind of the, the phases um, in the different phases the number of particles is not fixed. So, in other words even though the total number of uh, particles in the liquid plus gas is fixed, but the number of uh, molecules of the liquid is not fixed because some of it can evaporate and become gas and some of the molecules of the gas can condense and become a liquid. So, you know that when particle exchange is allowed, so what equalizes is the chemical potential. So, so here instead of uh, particles exiting to the environment, what is happening is that the particles are exiting from one phase into another and uh, uh, vice versa. So, as a result the chemical potentials of the two phases equalize. So, that is pretty much what is happening here. So, they equalize when the pressure is a certain value uh, which is a liquid gas coexistence pressure. So, coming back to these formulas. So, uh, you can see that uh, I can use the differential relation also which tells me that uh, this is basically the second law of thermodynamics if you like uh, for uh, reversible processes. So, it tells you that T d s is d u plus P d v minus mu d n. And now, uh, if I use this idea that uh, uh, Gibbs free energy per particle is g by n, uh, entropy per particle is s by n and volume per particle is v by n, the uh, differential change in the chemical potential is basically uh, given by the differential change in the Gibbs free energy per particle and you can convince yourself that this is given by this formula. And now, uh, because the liquid and gas part of it should be equal. So, I just told you that the liquid uh, chemical potential should be same as uh, gas chemical potential. You can uh, equate these two and you can derive uh, the coexistence curve. So, the coexistence curve is basically the pressure versus temperature at a fixed volume. So, the coexistence curve is uh, given by what is called the clausius clyperon equation which is obtained by uh, equating um, dt my plus vl dp with uh, gas dt plus v gas dp. So, if you uh, solve for dp by dt you get this. So, it is basically the change in entropy from the liquid uh, entropy per particle with uh, liquid and gas uh, phases uh, divided by the basically the volume per particle which is inverse of the density. So, the change in the density of the liquid and gas regions uh, times the uh, change in the entropy is effectively the rate of change of pressure with temperature. So, basically that is what this is the coexistence curve is pressure versus temperature. So, the slope of the coexistence d p by d t is the slope of this curve. So, this is uh, I mean the see this blue thing is the only you know uh, this is the only coexistence part of this this is a realistic uh, phase diagram it is called. So, it is the realistic phase diagram only this blue curve can be captured by this analysis that I have described till now because after all the what is the blue curve it is the gas and liquid coexistence uh, region. So, so that is all I can describe. So, the rest of it also describes a solid. So, which I cannot capture using my van der Waals equation. So, the van der Waals equation captures only the uh, liquid and gas coexistence. So, this blue curve. So, the triple point is when uh, the solid also coexists with liquid and vapor. So, the idea is that uh, you can see that uh, uh, the slope of this is uh, described by so that dp by dt of this is uh, basically described by the clausius clyperon equation this curve you can derive using you know van der waals idea up to this point so this is your critical point which also is captured by van der waals uh, theory okay so the rest of it is not captured by van der waals theory so but then this is the realistic phase diagram so, I want you to stare at this and uh, so this is all uh, I will have time to discuss uh, in this course because uh, you know actually deriving this phase diagram from a realistic uh, theoretical first principle theory is very difficult and I will not attempt it. Okay, uh, so, in the next class we will uh, discuss another topic which is called polyparamagnetism. 
सो होप यू विल जॉइन मी फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू